What's up, family? Thank you for tuning in to the Dream Nation podcast. My name is Casanova. I'll be your host, and I'm excited to be bringing to you entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and trailblazers from around the world. Stay locked in with us because we're about to go on a journey that will change your life. Hey, Dream Builder. This episode is powered by Design Crowd. Design Crowd is a website that helps entrepreneurs, startups, and small businesses get creative and quality designs from custom logos to business cards and even web designs. There's a community of over 900,000 designers from all across the world that's ready to bring your idea to life in as little as ours. So head on over to designcrowd.com forward slash dream nation and see what all the hype is about. What's up, Dream Builder? We are back again, and I'm excited about this episode because we have somebody on the show that has so much substance, and he's going to talk to us about the power of positivity, the power of tribe, and the power of not quitting. And I think for where we are in life right now, there's a lot of people that are just on that edge of like, man, do I quit? Do I, do I give up? Or do I pivot? What do I do? And so today we have an expert on the line. Please help me in welcoming my brother, Mr. Christopher Worth. Chris, you want to go ahead and say what's up to Dream Nation? Dream Nation, how are you? And uh, I appreciate the opportunity. I'm excited to be here today. Oh, man, we're excited to have you and we're blessed to have you. So I always love to make sure that I can give the proper introduction to each and every person that comes on the show. And the way that I do this is I compare us as entrepreneurs, thought leaders, change makers, to superheroes and the reason being is because we're constantly flying around the world we're putting on our cape and we're trying to solve some of the world's biggest problems so here's what we know behind every superman behind that s on the chest there's a guy named clark kent and sometimes we know how to describe him but sometimes we don't but what we don't know is behind the s on the chest of chris worth tell me who is that clark kent that's a awesome question, and I've been uh, fortunate to be a guest on a bunch of podcasts. And I think this question is is so different. But be behind my S on the chest, I think is somebody that is really looking to discover what's the difference of good versus great versus the best. And for me, I think as I recently turned forty two when you get to that point in life, kind of um, when things are a little bit different than in your thirties and twenties, I've just been super interested in, in finding out about other people and sharing their stories. And for me, I'd say I'm insanely and intensely curious of what makes the best, the best and what makes everybody else the rest. Man, I, I love it. So talk to me about when you grew up, when you were growing up, give us a background on your childhood, because obviously where you are today is not what it always started off to looking like. So were you somebody who you were always genuinely curious? Were you somebody that you were always outgoing? Were you a, more of a shy kid? And then at some point you you started to, to, to break out of that shell. What did that look like for you? <laughs> um, I think if you, if you ask my parents, you'll probably get a different story. I always was very much into sports. I played two sports in college. I coached high school and college basketball for, for a few years. And for me, when I was young, I was always playing sports. Football, basketball, and baseball were my main three. I also played tennis at a pretty high level. And what I didn't realize was I was always interested in people that were the best of their, their field. Uh, so obviously I first followed a lot of athletes, coaches, teams, um, in regards to me as a, as a child, I have two amazing parents still married to this day, super important and influential in my life, always encouraged me and supported me in many different ways. Uh, I think from a childhood, I was a little bit of a class clown per se. I liked the attention. I was, you know, the guy always trying to make people laugh, always trying to encourage people in some way, shape or form. And I think, you know, when you're eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old, you probably don't do it. Uh, the best way. So even though I, I can laugh now and say I was a class clown, I know for a fact there were uh, teachers and classmates who were probably like, all right, we need you to uh, calm down a little bit. It's okay not to always be uh, front and center. Hmm. Uh, I got you, man. I Trust me, I was exactly that way. And, and it's funny because I think that those are the people who become the greats, right? It's because you don't allow somebody to suppress that that dream or that kid that you are on the inside. Because once you turn to 14, 15, if you haven't already developed a callus, right, for being able to tune out the noise of the people who essentially just aren't for you, 
then that's where you can struggle at during those really development years of 17 through 25. Right. And because it's always different stages. And so I think that that's part of the reason why we're here today. And I'm sure somebody that's out there listening at this or watching this, they're like, yo, that's the exact way that I was feeling when I was younger. And so I know that I'm on the right path. Right. So talk to me about where did positivity become? Because now you teach people about the, the power of positivity. But was this something that where did it all come from for you? Because you could be teaching a lot of different things, especially when you say, hey, I was a high performing athlete, right? Most of the time, then we start to talk about a peak performer or habits or things like that. But teaching positivity is a little bit different. Where did that come for you? Yeah, it, you know, it's it's interesting how things kind of come come to to form. And obviously, there are a bunch of people that at an early age, they, you know, plan their entire life out. I need to go to this college and this med school and I need to get this residency and, and fill in the blanks. But for me, it goes back to sports. And what I didn't realize at the time was how you approach every day, every practice, every game, every win, every loss. It has a huge impact down the road. And for me, I started to watch a lot of people and it started with my, my parents always encouraging me to read and to find out what else was out there. And my father was a big supporter. He coached me in everything other than, than football. And he was always giving me different things to read, different things to watch. He was always encouraging me whenever there was something on TV about a player or a coach, somebody that was interested, he would say, hey, Chris, you know, check this out. Or, hey, you know, he'd leave a, an article for me, whether it was a newspaper or magazine. And what I realized over time now when I look back is that I was fascinated with people that approach things a little bit differently than the other people. People that had that mindset of, of I'm not going to take no for an answer. And you talked about callousing, you know, people who weren't for them. You know, not that I'm a, a fan, but you look at somebody like Tom Brady, who was drafted in the sixth round. He didn't play in college until his senior year. He was always, you know, the guy behind the guy. And, and his first couple of years at Michigan, he was, you know, a couple of guys behind the guy. And he didn't allow it to deter him. And what he did was he controlled the controllables. You know, he couldn't control who was going to draft him or not. He couldn't control which team he went to or which quarterback in front of him played well or didn't play well. But he focused on his mind and his mindset. And I realized early on, somebody that was a huge influence to me was Zig Ziglar. He was somebody that epitomized the mindset and having a positive attitude and one of, one of his quotes that I absolutely love is a positive mind or a positive attitude won't get you anything, but a positive attitude will get you anything better than a negative attitude will. And if you think about that for a second, you break it down, it's very simplistic to, to read and to say and to hear. But if you take it a step further of what it really means is a positive attitude gives you an advantage over anybody or anything that has a negative attitude. It doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to be successful. It doesn't mean if you and I were competing in anything and I had a positive attitude and you have a negative attitude that I'm going to win. But I'm convinced 100% every day of the week and twice on Sunday, if you can approach everything with a positive attitude, you give yourself an advantage over, over those people, those things, and those opportunities that maybe don't come with, with that same positive attitude. No, I absolutely agree. I always say, you know, the only thing that you can really, the only thing that you can really protect every single day is your own energy, right? And so what did mm. I mean? It's things that are going to happen to you and you can't control the things that happen to you, but you can control how you respond to them, right? And so if you have that, that energy that you protect every single day and you afflict that on other people, eventually it just feels like that the world starts to conspire to give you anything that you want because everybody sees you as the person of positive energy. And so the optimism is a lot of the times what can at least lead you to exposure and that exposure is what really gives you life. And then other people are always like, hey, that's the guy that every time I see him, he's smiling. So I don't know what I like about him, but I like something about him because everybody else around me is they always got a chip on their shoulder. So I think that that's a great, great point for you. When you first started to understand that there was power and positivity, what did that look like? Was there one time that like you were kind of going through some things or you saw a scenario was just not the best and, and then you like. I guess, um, inflicted the positivity into this environment and then people responded back to you or like, I really love this, or I didn't even know that this was a thing or like, what did that look like for you? You know, going back to what you said prior to that, the idea of energy, 
I realized that no matter what you are doing, whether it's in a professional setting, a personal setting, with family, with, with friends, we all bring some type of energy to everything we do. And what I realized is most people brought a comfort zone or status quo level of energy, if not less. And what I mean by that is I don't mean it from a critical perspective, but people approach things with, all right, I got to go to school today, or here's another day at work. And they kind of set themselves up for, all right, it's going to be just another day. And what I gravitated towards the people that had that smile on their face, no matter what it was, whether it was raining, snowing, whether it was a beautiful day, the people that were going into a two hour or three hour meeting at work, that was maybe going to be, you know, a little bit tiresome and not what they truly wanted to do, but they still approached it with, with that positive mindset. And I've studied over the last few years, the idea behind energy and how we all emit a certain type of energy. And if I bring this conversation you know, I'm very low key and, and I'm, you know, a little bit, you're, you're going to feel it as opposed to if I jump on and, you know, I'm positive and I'm smiling in my body language. And, and I realized that, you know, as a 5'11 white guy, my goal of playing in the NBA, you know, put me at a division three college basketball and that was my NBA. But within that, you know, in my sophomore, junior, senior year in high school, I realized that I wasn't going to be you know, six foot six, most likely, you know, I realized that I wasn't going to all of a sudden be able to have a 50 inch vertical leap, but I realized that every single day I could bring that positive energy to practice. And I didn't understand it at the time about the whole concept behind positive energy per se, but I realized that I could control my effort. I can control my attitude and I can control how much I give of both of those during practice and games. And I realized that as I was watching there were kids that on my team and other teams that just emitted this, this extra energy, this extra something. And it wasn't until now, much later on in life, when I realized that it was the attitude, it was their energy. And I don't talk about politics or religion because you could start World War 100, but I do believe in, in the religion of karma and what you put out there. And when you do it in a genuine way and sincerely towards others and to others, it comes back to you tenfold. No, man, that's so, so powerful. And I think that everybody, we don't think about those types of things. I, I know this is something that just happened to me this morning. So it's very relevant. <laughs> My daughter, she, I have a three-year-old daughter and she was definitely on, you know, 10 today to say the least. <laughs> There's a lot of fights going on and I'm like, mom, put your coat on and, and your socks on and she's just fighting it. Well, anyway, you know, I found myself getting frustrated, right? And not to the point that like, I was going to yell at her or anything, but I mean, it's just like, oh. And that's exactly what I did. And here's what I did. And, and I just told one of my brothers about this today, one of my best friends. And I said, you know what? I found myself this morning that even when I was like, man, I got to deal with this again, but I reframed it really quickly. Mm. And it was not that I got to, but it was, yeah, I get yeah. to, right? Because that for, these are first world problems that a lot of us are looking at. And it's like, yo, people would die to, to, you know, have the problems that we had. And for even, I'll be honest, for even that 30 seconds, it helped to reframe my energy to where it was like, look, and then you got to assess the situation. It's like, okay, mm. still understand her, her brain has only been developing for 36 months, right? She's still trying to figure out who she is. So it's assessing that situation to where when you first say, I get to, let me take a breath, but then assessing that situation, you say, it's not the end of the world. Like, what is she supposed to do? What do you think that you were doing at three? So it's the same thing. You can apply this to family or whatever, but I love that you said that, you know, uh, of just really, when I go in there, it's like, man, I got to go to work. Well, hey, I get to go to work because there's a lot of people out here that don't even have a job that they are out on the streets or something. They're like, if somebody would just give me this opportunity. And so mm -hmm. I love that you said that. That's so powerful. For somebody, have you started to develop frameworks on just things like that? To, if somebody is going through a struggle today, like if there's something of what they can do to try to just change their environment for that morning to then mm -hmm. get a little bit momentum, have you started to develop frameworks like that? Yeah, and, and I think what you said, just to touch on it real quick, leading into your question is, it's when you reframe certain things, it, it changes your perspective. Get to versus, you know, I got to. to. I, I got to go to work. No, I get to. I have to do this. No, you get to. You have the opportunity. And to your point, you know, there are people that that never have the opportunity to have kids, and they have spent years and and a lot of money trying to have kids. So, 
you know, there's a person who's sitting out there saying, you know, Casanova, you know, you're really complaining about your three-year-old daughter, you know, having to put her coat on. Like my husband and I, or my wife and I, we've been trying for the last nine years to have kids. And, you know, I have three kids myself. And when you think about that for a second, it, it leads, I think, back to your question is some of the, some of the things that we talk about is gratitude. You know, there are people that come to events when I get a chance to speak or companies and you can just see, you know, their arms are crossed and, and you know that, you know, life just kicked them, you know, kicked them in the, you know, in the gonads that day and starting off and, and they just, you know, you, they have that, you know, approach where, you know, they spilled coffee or, you know, they got stuck in traffic just coming in and you just, you can see it in their face and, and, Everybody, those people included, we all have something to be grateful for. And if you can reframe, no matter what you're going through, no matter how difficult today is, no matter what obstacle or challenge you have, if you just take a step back for a second, just like you did, it doesn't mean where you, you know, you snap your fingers and, you know, you're not frustrated ever again with your daughter. And no matter what's going to happen in the next 20 years, you're like, everything's perfect. No, it's acknowledging it. It's assessing it but then it's going ahead and self-correcting. And, and that to me is super powerful, what you said, because to, in today's day and age with social media, people only want to show their highlight reel. You know, right. they always, they always want to show I'm great. I'm perfect. You know, this is amazing. And I don't in any way, you know, want, want it to be the opposite where all people show are just the bad things. But what about the people that struggled? What about, for example, you sharing that story where you say, you know what, I just wanted to, you know, rip my head, my hair out and just be like, what are you doing? But you'd stop you pause and you come back and it's the same thing with gratitude and we talk about meditation and people you know think think it's this you know hokey you know sitting down for 2 hours straight i know some of the most successful people in business and sports and different fields that they'll meditate for 30 seconds or a minute or 2 minutes mm. and their meditation is just slowing down calming down for a minute and approaching something i went through a pretty difficult divorce and i spent a bunch of time unfortunately in and out in and out of court and dealing with lawyers and things. And, and I really embraced just taking a few deep breaths and approaching those situations. It didn't matter. It didn't mean that I snapped my finger and I said, you know, going into court or this, this meeting with attorneys is going to be amazing. And I'm so excited, but I said, okay, let's, let's assess the situation. I'm here. Let's make the most out of it. Again, going back to my mindset of let's be as positive as we can. Let's approach this with as positive a mindset and we're going to make the best out of it. We're going to make the most out of it. And you know, it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect and easy, but I guarantee you, you know, it was so much easier because I was able to approach things with that frame as opposed to, you know, this is going to be bad, you know, nothing good is going to come out of it. No, I, I love it. Talk to me about how big, as you start to be on this positivity kick, I think I know that we all know for a lot of people, um, they don't have the environment, right? And so they want to be positive and they want to believe it in themselves, but it's very tough when you're going into a toxic environment, whether that means your coworkers, your family, your friends, whoever it is. So talk to me about what did you have to do to get your environment, right? To be on the same page as you. So where it didn't always feel like you were the outlier trying to talk this holier than thou positivity and that other people could also, you know, latch onto it. So then you could keep going in your purpose. Hey, Dream Builder, if you're anything like me, you have no idea how to come up with a quality logo or even a creative design. You know that quality is important, but it's not always the easiest to nail down, right? That's where Design Crowd comes in. Whether it's a logo, a website, book cover, or even a social media ad, they have a community of over 900,000 professional designers around the world ready to help solve your creative problem. Head on over to designcrowd.com forward slash dream nation to learn more and just for being a part of the dream nation tribe you're going to receive a special vip offer when you sign up of up to 150 dollar credit now instead of waiting weeks for an agency to pitch you an idea you'll be able to get a design of exactly what you need within just three days so again head on over to designcrowd.com forward slash dream nation and check it out yes news newspapers, you know, videos, movies, TV, all of a sudden. And if, and if then you're taking that information and you're sharing it with your circle, with your own tribe, and it's not bringing you up or building you up, you need to take a step back and say, okay, 
is this the best environment for me? And what I always tell people is it doesn't mean that you all of a sudden, you know, fire your mom or your wife or your husband or your best friend. You say, look, Casanova, like we've been boys for, you know, 10 years, but look, you're not at the same level as me. So unfortunately, you know, today's the last day we're ever going to speak. I really wish you the best of luck with your life. And, you know, hopefully we'll, you know, connect at some point. You know, that would be, you know, one, one extreme. But what I say to people and I challenge them is, Think about those people. And if those people are not lifting you up, inspiring you, if the people on your social media are not inspiring you, it doesn't mean you have to kill them and, and wish harm on them, but maybe unfollow them or maybe mute them. Maybe you don't go out to dinner with those people, you know, four times a week or three times a week. Maybe during work, if those people are you know, always talking about their boss and how things, they don't like this or that, maybe you say, you know what? I'm not going to grab lunch with them today. I'm going to bring my own lunch and I'm going to go for a walk for 10 or 15 minutes. And it goes back to something that I know you, you know of because I'm sure you, you've spoken about it and your guests have definitely spoken about it. It's controlling the controllables. You know, you can control a few things in our life. And I know that sounds somewhat negative, but it's the reality. You can't control the weather. You can't control whether your favorite sports team wins or loses, you can't control, you know, who your friends like or follow or support, but you can control who you spend time with. You can control what you watch. You can control what you read. And I think if you do that audit around your inner circle, and it doesn't mean that you, you know, you close your circle out and start over, but maybe you say to yourself, okay, as we're approaching this new year, you know, maybe I'd like to level up a little bit. And I'm trying to get my career to the next level. So maybe I'm going to look for a mentor. Maybe I'm going to look for an accountability partner, somebody that might be able to help inspire me and coach me to that next level. And, and you can still have those people in your life, but you're leveling up and spending a little bit more time with some of those people that are outside of, of your circle because you're looking to increase something in your personal and professional life. No, absolutely. I think, again, doing that audit, I think this is a perfect time for us to be auditing. We need to audit a lot of things right? Subscription services, you got the Netflix, all those things. And there's not to say that these things that you can't have luxuries or amenities in life. But if you're somebody who's sitting on the couch right now, or you're watching this, or you're listening to this in your car and you're like, okay, but is there anything that I'm paying for that is not bringing me value, right? That means that I'm just letting it go every single month and I'm afraid to cancel it because I might miss out. Well, understand that you're missing out on something else that you could be investing that same money into that's going to level you up if you didn't take this action. So understand if any time that you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to something else, right? So you, what are you going to say yes to? What are you going to say no to? Be very intentional about your time. Be very intentional about your energy. Be very intentional about your environment. So I think that that's very powerful. And I'm glad that you said that you, I've always pitched this no quit living right? No quit. There's no quit in you. And I obviously anybody who's listening at this, we can all understand that it kind of came from sports. Was there a time um, that you were about to quit that, that allowed you to say, no, I got to teach other people this. And if so, tell us about what that time was. Where did you develop the no quit living from? Yeah, that's, that's a really, really good question. And I get asked that quite often in, in some way, shape or form. And, and for me, there wasn't one specific moment that I can trace back to saying this was my quote unquote, the one time where I built this no quit um, attitude or mentality. What I realized was there were many times. And what I mean by that is with sports, there were many times where I didn't want to practice. I didn't want to work out. I wanted to go out with friends. I wanted to hang out with girlfriends and I didn't want to do those things. Then in business, there were times when I didn't want to make those extra phone calls and I didn't want to get to the office early on a Saturday morning and spend some time during the summer when some friends were doing, you know, some of those other fun things. But I realized is every single great person and you fill in the blank blank of the field profession, they've all had those no quit moments. Some are amazingly difficult, some are monumental, but some people that I've, ha I've had the fortune of connecting with They've had so many no quit moments in their life. And for me, it goes back to sports, but it goes all the way through, you know, my life. And, and the most recent one was, was going through a very difficult divorce where, you know, I could have quit and give up, given up in many different ways for, for my kids and, and just say, you know what, you know, it's getting difficult and you know what, it's not worth the fight. It's not worth the effort. And for me, 
one of the things I do with my clients is we write what's called a legacy statement. You know, a bunch of people call it different things, mission statement, you know, what, what do you want people to say at your funeral? But the legacy statement is, you know, what you want your kids or your grandkids to say, you know, in 20, 30, 40 years. And for me, I want my kids and or grandkids down the road to say that, that I epitomize this no quit mentality where I got knocked down many times. And when most people would quote unquote give up and would have, you know, thrown in the white flag, I got up every single time and I learned, I, I grew. And ultimately I had the vulnerability to ask people for help along the way. And that for me has been something that I've, I've opened up myself to, especially during this last year, but the importance of being vulnerable and asking for help and not from a handout perspective, not from, hey, Casanova, open up your wallet and give me some money help, but from the, from the place of, you know something that I don't know, or you've been somewhere I haven't been yet, and I want to learn from the best. I want to grow, and I want to level up. And I think when, when people are vulnerable and they ask for help in that way, amazing things happen. Oh, man, absolutely. I mean, that right there, if somebody's really paying attention and they're not just listening, but they're actually hearing you saying that to say, if you reached out to me, if anybody reached out and said, hey, Casanova, you know, I would love or hey, Chris, hey, I would love to get, um, you know, some support from you. And I know that your time is very valuable. I'm not looking for a handout, but here's what I know. I have a lot of respect for you and you've been some places that I haven't been and you know some things that I don't know. So I would love to just hear your perspective on something. I'm definitely down with just sharing what I'm going through. I'm already taking a lot of action, but here's where I'm getting stuck. Please let me know if you have five minutes. I'd love to just share it and, and hear your perspective. That right there will get you into so that is a hack right there that will get you into so many doors so many because people understand one of the things that i learned early on was persistence respects persistence and it doesn't mean that you have to be beaten down the door but what that means is you have to show up you have to follow up right those two mm. things you show up the first time but then follow up and you're like hey i'm still letting you know i know your time is very valuable i'm still taking action over here there's just this one thing that's still bogging my mind i believe that you might have a solution for it and you know that i'm just a big fan of yours as i said a month or two back if you have five minutes please let me know i'm willing to meet you wherever you are zoom meeting come to california or whatever I need to do. That right there is how you can get your next coach or mentor. You, you just got to send two of those messages and you're probably in the door. You know, I'll tell you what, you said something that is so important. And, and I've had the fortune of having some, some pretty uh, big guests on my podcast and people always ask, you know, well, how'd you do it? And, and I always share, I'm like, you want the secret? I'll tell you, and, you know, I'm, they grab a pen or they take their phone out. And I say, it, it's about being persistent, but it's also about being respectful. And you said something that, that I have to just touch on for a second. It's you're not asking for three hours of somebody's time. You're asking for five minutes. And for me and for you, when we ask for people to be guests on our podcast, we do it in a respectful way, understanding that there are things that people are being asked every single day. And to your point, you know, we all have those options. And when we say yes to something, we're saying no to something else. But the other thing that that I have to just touch on for a second is the most successful people that I know, they have all had multiple mentors in their lives that they will literally say, if it was, it was this person, or they'll go back and say, you know, when I was 29 years old, you know, this person or these two people came in my life or my, they came in my professional career and really helped me go from here to here. And that for me is, is the most amazing concept. So if anybody listening to this is thinking about reaching out to somebody Figure out the way to do it where it's respectful. Figure out a way to do it where it's not a handout. You're not asking, hey, give me some money or, hey, you know, can you do this for me? You're doing it in a, in a very professional way. But if you know that and you truly believe that at some point they have had multiple people that mentored them, they're going to return the favor. And, and I think the other thing I always say, my, my dad always taught me is if you never ask, the answer is always no. Facts. Facts. No, it's so many gems. I hope so. that right there can change anyone's life. That 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 right there is is an amazing tip. So I love it. Let me ask for somebody that's listening at you right now, and they say it's great that he he has clients, he speaks, he has the positivity, he's went through some things, but he's came out on the other side better than he ever was. But if he could go back, knowing that he's wiser now, and a lot of people say they wouldn't change anything, 
Um, but I always like to ask the question in a different way, knowing that you are wiser now, if there was one thing that you wish that you could change or you wish that you would have implemented sooner to accelerate your process and your journey, what would that one thing have been? Mm, I, I have never been asked that the way you just asked it. And I love that question. And, and I have a very simple answer. When I was in fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, my father always challenged me in a good way. And he said, Chris, read five minutes extra a night, something that's not school related, whether it was a fiction book, whether it was a biography, whether it was, you know, Sports Illustrated, whether it was something. And he did it from a positive way of inspiring me for SATs or PSATs, my vocabulary, my writing, my speaking. And I always said, no, 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 no. And now over the last four or five years, I read over a hundred books a year. And my dad and I always, and he jokes, he said, well, let me get this straight. He said, so when you were in seventh grade, when you had no kids and no businesses and none of this, you couldn't read five extra minutes a night, but now you can read a hundred plus books. So for me, the reason I preface that is I wish that or I wish if I could go back, I would have jumped into the personal development or the self growth world from a student a little bit earlier. And I think the reason why that's important, but it has a, a side note to it is you have to be ready for it. And what I mean by that is you and I could be best friends and you could be a huge believer in going to conferences and, and reading a bunch of personal development books and you try to get me into it. But until I'm ready on my own to do it, it doesn't matter how you say it, it doesn't matter what you say it. So although I'd like to have started that, I think fortunately and unfortunately, I don't know if I would have been in the right frame of mind, but assuming that I would have been, I wish I, I wish I'd started that in, in high school um, because I see the value in it now, not only personally, but professionally. And, and it's something that we all can do and we all should do is, is working on ourselves and not from a, I need to make more money perspective, or I need to have a nicer house or, you know, those things are all important, but I'm talking about from the foundational, you know, backbone of, I just want to become a better version of myself. Man, I, I love it. I love it. There's that personal development. It changes everything. It does like information changes situations. Mm. You have to go get the information, but just like you said, I mean, you have to be open because you, something that I learned along the journey. And I thought that it was so true. You cannot say the wrong thing to the right person, but you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. And sometimes mm. they're just in the wrong season. Or it's not even the wrong season. They're just not in that season of their life to be receptive and hearing it. But things happen, things change. Again, this is why we have to get exposure and we have to be around the right environment because eventually you'll start to see that that positivity that's continuously inflicted upon you, you're like, well, how is this person always positive? What are, what are you doing? Because you're gonna see that and you're like, well, I don't like feeling the way of being negative, right? There's something else that was said to me, which was so powerful, but like, you can be a great seed, but just be in bad soil, right? You can be a great seed, but you're in bad soil. So you have to ask yourself, am I in the right? Because a great seed in bad soil still will not grow, right? So you have to ask yourself, you know, are you, are you a great seed, right? The other way that I like to frame it is, to, is for somebody to ask themselves, we know that pressure is the, is the one um, common denominator in all of our lives. We all have pressure to do something, right? And so you have to ask yourself, you know, I understand that pressure busts pipes, but at the same time, pressure creates diamonds, diamonds, right? So you have to ask yourself when you're going through that storm and you're like, man, this is going wrong. But one, I'm going to use this as a part of my story. Like, Ooh, this is going to be good when I can share how, how this happened. And I came out on the other side, this is going to be good. But then at the same time, you have to ask yourself, even before that, it says, am I a busted pipe or my beautiful diamond? Mm. Right. A busted pipe most... or beautiful diamond. I love that. I'm, I, 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 when you were saying it, I, I, I mouthed diamond, but I've never heard it referenced that way. And I think it, it's super powerful. And anybody who's listening to this, if you did not hear what Casanova just said, think about that, a busted pipe or a beautiful diamond. Yes. And it's very hard to tell yourself, I don't care where you are. Right. But even the person at the lowest moment, if you want to get out of your situation, you say, am I a busted pipe or a beautiful diamond? Right? Like you cannot tell yourself you're a busted pipe. If you do, we got a lot more work to do. You got to at least you're like, no, I'm a beautiful diamond. I don't know how I got to this point. I'm just in a round surrounded by a lot of dirt right now, but I am a beautiful diamond. I was put on this earth. I'm still here. Think about all of the wins that you've already had. Even if right now, 
now you're at your lowest point. You've had wins in life that other people would not be able to come back from, right? Some people had a child at 16. Now they're 34. They just went through a bankruptcy, but you had a child for the last 18 years where some people can't even get out of year three, four, five, right? We see people do crazy stuff with childs because in that first two weeks, like they just don't know how to. So again, you have a lot of wins. You have a lot of accomplishments, but what you have to do is you have to write all those things down and you have to continuously review them because when you see those, you're like, wait, like I am a beautiful diamond. I did come through on the other side of divorce. I did, you know, I've done this and I'll continue to do this because I know that that's what I'm here for. So I love the fact that you brought that up, man. I mean, just again, so many gems and values, but it all starts with, again, having that positive uh, uh, affirmations and that positive environment and, and your attitude. What do you bring every single day to the situation? How you do anything, which is what I, I heard you say is how you do everything, right? So it's that foundation every single day. This has been a phenomenal conversation, my brother. Um, the last question that I have for you is there's somebody out there that still has that little voice in their head. And we all have that voice, that little voice that says, you know what? I'm glad that they have it going on, but I'll be honest. Like my little voice is telling me that I'm not smart enough. I'm not strong enough, or maybe I just don't have enough resources like they had. What's the one thing that you would leave this person with to get them to just take action? You know, I go back to a uh, sports analogy I use all the time is, is do, do one thing today outside of your comfort zone. And what I mean by that is you might not have the resources. You might not have fill in the blank that somebody else has, but do one thing today that's outside of your comfort zone. And if you compound that doing another thing tomorrow and another thing the, the third day, the fourth day, all of a sudden you have the momentum moving forward. It doesn't mean overnight you're going to have that, you just snap your finger and everything's perfect. But if you do that one thing and you challenge yourself to embrace one thing outside of your comfort zone, you're going to focus on that. You're going to think a little bit less about the other things. And you're going to be able to have an impact on your own life, personal, professional, career, family, with friends. But just focus on that one thing. And, and for me, the reason I share that comfort out of your comfort zone is some of the most amazing people that I've been able to connect with, they have not only a no quit story, but at some point in their life, personally or professionally, they did something outside of their comfort zone that led to something unbelievably amazing. And once they got past that first 30 seconds, it was a whole different, whole different ball game. And, and I think we all are, have encountered a bunch of very difficult things in this year of 2020. And I think it's just, you know, focusing on, again, controlling what you can control, but just do one thing right now, today, tonight, tomorrow, this morning, outside your comfort zone. I love it. I love it. Focus, focus, focus. In this 2021, you're going to have an opportunity to rewrite your story. Whatever your story is, you have this opportunity. We're all about to have this opportunity. Again, are at the end of 2021, are we going to see you as a busted pipe or are we going to see you as a beautiful diamond? We know that you're a diamond, but you got to believe it. For anybody who wants to stay connected with you, we're going to make sure that we put all of these links in the show notes to everything that you reference. But tell us, where can we find you at? Yeah, I, I, I share my personal email address on, on every show I do. And the reason is I love connecting with, with people. And back to my point about mentorship, I've had some amazing people that have given me time. So my personal email address is chris at noquitliving.com. And we're pretty active on Instagram. It's no underscore quit underscore living. And then our website for our company is just noquitliving.com. And as I said, I love connecting with people. And for me, I have a goal every single day. It's having a positive impact on one person. And I know that when I put my head down at the pillow at night and I can look back at my day when, and I do it every night, review my day, if there's one person that I positively impacted, it helps me sleep. And that's my goal each and every single day. I love it. I love it. Well, my brother, I want to be the first one, if no one else has told you today, to let you know that I appreciate you and also to just say thank you. Uh, this has been a phenomenal conversation and there's been so many nuggets and jewels that was dropped and I can't wait to hear the feedback, to hear how other people were able to implement it and how it's changed their lives. So remember Dream Nation, just as he said, you have to take action because if you do not take action, that dream that you have will only merely be a fantasy. That's all for this one. We'll catch you on the next one. That's all we got for this episode. Thank you for sticking around. That truly means a lot to me. And hopefully that means that we delivered massive value on this one. If you haven't already, the way that you could say thank you 
to myself and the team is just by heading over to iTunes and leaving a review and a rating. That's what iTunes loves to see. That's how we get out there even more. And I would definitely, definitely be grateful for it. I know the team would as well. Do me a favor and head on over to dreamnationpodcast.com. That's where you're going to be able to find all of the resources that we talked about in today's episode, as well as more exclusive content. And you'll also be able to sign up to our email list where we have more exclusive content. And we always love to hear the feedback from you all because you're our tribe. So remember, in the dream we trust, we'll see you on the flip side.